not on the field. Yeah. Court Producer or ice. Team ball or on the couch. Let's go. To DC. This is Coach from the Couch with your host, C. Wall. Delivering coverage for yes. all DC sports teams from a hometown yes. perspective. Nats, Skins, Mystics, DC United, Washington Wizards, Caps. My name's C4 and I'm a PG girl Down for my skins, I don't know if you heard If you like watching sports, then I am your girl Sit down on the couch if you're not on the field Cold on the ice, pick any sport that you want Know that I cover it tight What would you like, from baseball to football and more But this can't go on the whole night Big shouts out to my HBCU fam Never forget who I am Through the wins and the losses, the highs and the lows We gotta stay strong so I stay ten toes Make the competition Back, back, the way I kick it make them mad, man See while that we live and direct Sit back on the couch and relax, come on Hey everybody, welcome to another edition of Coaching from the Couch You guys, this is your DMV Sports Weekly Weekly DMV Sports Update Either way you want to say it Listen, this is where you're going to get all of your information in one place of everything happening in DMV sports. I am your host, Seawall, and as always, it is my pleasure to be here to share all of the updates going on this week. Listen, there is absolutely a lot going on. You do not want to miss this one at all because it's just that much going to be covered. So check it out. Okay, before we get into the high fives and the what's ups, we're definitely going to cover the Georgetown Hoyas. Got to get on with Georgetown. We got to talk about Georgetown. I have a WNBA update, got a Caps update, got a Major League Baseball update. We have a Wizards update and Commanders. So there's a lot to be covered. I'm actually probably going to take like a real minor, minor break, but I want you all to stay on when we hit the time. But listen, you absolutely do not want to miss any portions of this. So while everyone is checking in, make sure you're hitting that love button. Make sure you're absolutely hitting that love button. This saying right here is in full effect in full effect, okay? Because there's absolutely never a dull moment whatsoever. So while everybody is checking in, I see Damon is checked in. I see DJ Bland. I see Cameron Mingo. I see Ron Blackwell. And the Seawall Chaplain, Mazdak, you all make sure you all are hitting him up and saying what's up. And of course, my mama, Mama Waller, y'all make sure y'all are saying what's up and hello to her. You want to make sure you are tagging your favorite fellow DMV sports fans in this conversation because it's going to be a meaty one. And sharing the show as well. You want make sure, okay? Starting out, Georgetown fans. Mm -hmm. I'm going there. I'm going there. I'm starting out with the Georgetown Hoyas. We got to have a conversation about this. This is how you know it's going to go a little long tonight. This is how you know we're going to have a slight break. We're going to have definitely have a slight break, but there's some things that need to be discussed. George Town Hoyas. Now, this is a conversation that I've been trying not to have, but we absolutely have to talk about it. 20 straight losses, now 21 after the Hoyas lost 57-53 to Seton Hall, 6-25 and 25 on the season, a program worst, 21-game losing streak. Georgetown is the first Big East tournament defending champion to lose its first game in the tournament following the year that they won since West Virginia in 2011. But wait a minute. Let me bag that. Six and 25. 21 game losing streak. 
See, I wasn't going to say nothing because it was been a whole lot going on. Okay. That's horrible. And I want to know, Georgetown fans, let's talk about this. Does Patrick Ewing stay on? Does he stay on? Because I believe John Thompson III got let go for much less. Okay. I don't know how Patrick Ewing is going to keep his job. I have no clue whatsoever. But if he does, it would be because of his notoriety and who he is to the Georgetown Hoya community. This is a big deal. And this is something that not even I was really talking about during the, during the season because of everything going on. But as you all know, we're in March Madness and it has to be discussed. This is terrible. The Hoyas, this season's Hoyas, the first team in Big East history to go 0-19 in conference play. The last time they won, December the 15th. What is today? What is today? December the 15th. I don't know how Patrick Ewan keeps his job after this. Um, I'm not necessarily saying that I'm an advocate that he should keep his job after this. Now, listen, recruitment is a big challenge. And I don't know if coach needs to tap into, I mean, who, who is the most famous Georgetown Hoyer? It's got to be Allen Iverson, right? That, that, that would resonate with the recruits coming up. You know, the, the, those that are needing to make a decision and where they go to school. You got to tap into Allen Iverson. You got to do something. Got to get a, a team together. You got to get some of your friends from the from your, your Knicks teammates. You have to do something. But this right here is bad. It is absolutely horrible. And I'm not certain how Coach Ewing bounces back from this without pulling in a serious recruitment team. His name alone is not going to resonate with the high school recruits. It's just not. It's absolutely not. So something needs to be done very strategic so that he can build his squad up again. But I'm going to tell you all, I'm trying to give Coach Ewan some grace here because I know how hard it is to, you know, get recruits. It's hard. The competition is tough. But you haven't won a game since December the 15th? That's bad. That's absolutely horrible. And I know that Coach Ewan has said, you know, he hey, anything that, that is said or is, or, is, or is being mentioned will come from him. Something has to, something has to give. Um to the point here I see in the chat from Ron Blackwell, it, it it's a recruiting tactic. He can't do it himself. His name alone, I hate to say it, is going to mean nothing to these high school recruits. He's got to get plugged in with the, with the next generation coming up because this is not where it is and it's bad. I, I said, well, wait a minute. I don't know you all. More to come, more to come. But if you, but if you, if you hear that he got let go, don't be shocked. I hate to say that, but I mean, come on, you all. We, of course, we we all know, you know, it's Georgetown Hoyts and all that. But that's just any other Division One coach would have been fired. Am I right about it? I mean, that's that's what would have happened. So, more to come. I don't think this is the last we'll be hearing about this or talking about it. But it's definitely something that absolutely needed to be addressed. I had to say something. I'm like, Georgetown Hoyas fans, I got to talk about this. But I also want to share in part that recruitment's got to change. It's, it's tough. I understand that. But the recruitment strategy and the tactics, they've got to be better because this was downright sad for sure. 
WNBA fans, check in. You know I got to talk about my girls. You know I have to talk about the WNBA. As you know, I report on the Mystics as well. It has been noted. It has been set for the first time since 2019. The WNBA draft is returning to an in-person format that will be held on April 11th. Mark your calendars. April 11th at Spring Studios in New York. This is important. Here's why it's important. You all have been hearing me say this, and I'm going to keep saying it. It's important because the Washington Mystics have the number one pick in the draft. So April 11th, Spring Studios in New York. Make sure you are dialed into that to watch the Washington Mystics take the first pick in this year's draft. You want to be all the way tuned in with that. Trust me, we're going to be tracking that as well. Always a lot of conversation, and it should be a lot of excitement that a, that an area team has the number one pick in the draft. So everybody get excited. Mystics fans, that one's for you. So make sure you are locked in, and I'll keep updating you all on that, on what the outlook is for the number one pick in the WNBA draft by the Washington Mystics. Now, have everybody that's here and watching checked in, so I know that you're here with a love or like button. Because what's up next? The caps. Now, we're going to have, we're going to always start off with positive news. And you know, typically when it comes to the Washington Capitals, there's some positive news. So let's get into the positive news. Why don't we? Because that's always fun. That's always good. Not, not, not all things are bad in DMV sports, okay? Not all things. Earlier this week, Let's share congratulatory remarks to the iconic duo of Nicholas Backstrom and Alexander Ovechkin. You all, a thousand games together. That's huge. That's a lot of time to spend with a person, isn't it? Now that's, now that's historic right there. Shout out to Becky and Ovi, a thousand games together earlier this week. Alexander Ovechkin continues to just break records. Listen, he's now tied for third on the National Hockey League's all-time goal list. Okay, tied for third with Jeremy Jagger, and he's done it in 480 fewer games played. How in the world? I had to check the Caps PR. I said, wait a minute now. How in the world do you do this in 480 fewer games? But that is exactly what Alexander Ovechkin is doing. Keep your eyes on the Caps. I tell people, don't miss the history. Whatever you do, folks, do not miss the history that is being made by the great eight. Okay, don't miss it at all. Not at all. Mentioning Backy again. Let's go ahead and shout out Backy. Also this week, he has recorded his 1,000th career point, and he became the first player from the 2006 National Hockey League draft to reach this milestone. So shout out to Backy, shout out to Ovi. Like I said, positive vibes only, you all. Positive vibes only, at least when it comes to the Caps. We got to always enjoy and say that things positive about the Caps because, of course, as, you know, sports goes on, sometimes the conversation is not as always as positive, but you know I'm going to throw it all in there because I cover all of it. Now, where's my Major League Baseball fans? This is not necessarily a Nats update. This is a Major League Baseball update. Have you all checked in? Have you hit the love button? Are you here? So listen, the Major League Baseball and the MLB Players Association, they have reached a deal for a new collective bargaining agreement the baseball is back on. 
Baseball is back on you all. Here's some of the highlights that I think is important for not just Major League Baseball fans, but sports fans to understand. Listen, it's taking them 99 days to get this deal done. The lockout started in early December. So technically, this right here was the longest lockout in league history. Okay? Longest lockout. That's interesting, right? Listen, now this new collective bargaining agreement, I thought that this was interesting as well. They raised the league minimum. That means rookies are going to be getting paid a little bit more. They raised the league minimum by 100K. So in 2021, just last year, the league minimum was 575,000. They raised it by 100,000. So if you know anybody that can play baseball, they might want to go ahead and shoot their shot. No pun intended in that way, you know, try to hit it out of the park. Maybe we'll use that one for this one. So get more money. And here's another highlight from the collective bargaining agreement. It is now a 12-team postseason. Since the creation of the wild card game in 2012, it's been 10 teams, except for the shortened pandemic year in 2020. Now, 12-team postseason. Okay? Everybody got that? That That's some updates right there. Definitely some updates right there, okay? So, hey, you got it? Share it, share it with your friends. Major League Baseball updates. Got to share those. Now, let's see if we can get through this. We might, we, might, we might be able to fit everything in. If we can't, I'll adjust. Trust me. So, Wizards fans. Check in. Where are you, Wizards fans? And here's the thing. Tonight's Wizards update is pretty, pretty simple. I have two things I wanted to share. I wanted to share. Um, I, I, which one should I go first? I might let you all pick which one we could we should go first. I think I'm going to go with the, the rumors, and I normally don't do rumors, but I'll do rumors today about whether or not. Bradley Beal wants to join Philly in the offseason. Here's the thing about that. Tommy Shepard doesn't necessarily show his hand, right? Brad is getting pretty good at that, if I must say so myself. I'm going to say this. At this point, everyone needs to be watching because you, you say to yourself, okay, everybody believes that what Tommy Shepard is going to do is offer Brad this huge contract. Now, Tommy the Fleecer may not be doing that. He may not. Everyone may get shocked and say, he's not, he, he not doing that. And it may even be a double shock if they're all pretty much aware. Brad, it's been real. But we're going to figure this out. It really could go any way. It could. It could go that Tommy is going to keep saying we're going to pay him. This is what we're doing. We all know what this summer is. And he's going to give him this big contract. It also could be that Brad is doing what we all think is going to do the opposite of what we think that he is going to do, and that's walk. He could absolutely, let's let's just say this, because Brad basically said this in, in the media, hey, he could have made the decision to continue playing, but it was hurting, it was this, it was that, and the third. Hey, look, if, if the team was headed somewhere in which he thought we're going to fight for this playoffs, Maybe he could have played through the injury. Now, would that have been smart? No, it would not have been. Because if it's one thing that I'm learning about some of the athletes that are coming up now, it's not that they're necessarily not playing harder. They're playing smarter. 
So if Brad says, hey, listen, I'm talking hypothetically here. This is not what he said to me. I have no idea. But I'm thinking very hypothetically here, okay? All right, this team may not go that far. Hey, if they make the playoffs, that's nice. You never know. Might be feeling better in the month of, in the month or so. And if they make the playoffs, I could come back. Never can tell. But why, why continue to injure yourself if you're playing for your future with another franchise? I'm starting to think that what we all think is going to happen is not what's going to happen. And that's why when these room, when the rumor mill started going about Philly, I said, well, dang. Because, of course, we're all thinking, you know the Wizards are going to offer Brad that money, and you know he's going to take it because he's not going to get that money anywhere else, which is all true. But Brad is a 10-year veteran. He's going into year 11. If, and if he feels like he has a better opportunity of winning a championship somewhere else, I wouldn't be mad if he rolled. I wouldn't be mad if they all said, hey, listen, Brad, you know we can't pay you that money. I already knew that. It's all good. We can keep doing this song and dance because we family, but you already know that I'm gone. So. We shall see. Y'all remember that song? Who was it? Aretha Franklin? Who's zooming who? That's how. That's what I feel like is happening right now with the Wizards. I'm like, well, who's fleecing who? Who's fleecing who right now? Whatever's happening is very strategic and it's smart. When you think about it, if Brad was to go somewhere else and the team ends up not paying him that money, that's not a bad. That's. I think that would be best for both sides. It really would, but it's more to come and more to be tracked. Team is playing all right. Somebody's got to win and somebody's got to lose, but I wanted to bring that up because it's absolutely an important point that fans should be tracking because the media, we're absolutely tracking it. Here's another thing that came up and I thought it was funny. I had to say it. I said, oh, hey, Aldridge, this was so funny. When he brought up and I see some comments in the chat, about the potential for John Wall to come back. I don't know if you all remembered um, when John first left, and I was a little, you know, passionate about that topic. Um, he would have to opt out of his 47.3 million player option that he, he has next year. Um, in order to get back, you know, he hasn't played this season at all. Um, the Wizards do need a point guard. I mean, unless everybody's fine with Tomas Sardaransky and Hal Neto. But I'll say this. It's not like it's totally bonkers to think that John would come back. And here's one thing I know for a fact. John Wall loves D.C. He loves this place. And I mean, the reality is when you are drafted into a team, much like Brad, I'm going to be honest, when you're drafted into a team, that is where you want to spend your time, right? That's the dream, right? The team that drafts you, you bring a championship there. And it just doesn't seem like things are, are going, it's not going right. It's not going well. Will he opt out? I don't know, because that's a lot of money to opt out of. 47.3 million, my word. But hey, you're sitting on the bench right now, man. Somebody is going to have to do something. It's not completely foolish to think that John Wall wouldn't come back to D.C. He he would come back to D.C. And I think there would be provisions made, potentially. But there would have to be a lot of conversations that would need to be had in order for that to transpire, of course, right? Because people leaving out the door, John is people in this case. It's a lot of hurt feelings. It's a lot of things that didn't rub people the, wrong, the right way. Like, wait a second, that's not what you said. That's not what you told me. But hey, I'm telling you, having to fight what your heart wants, that's tough. But I had to bring that article up. I had to bring it up that David Aldridge said, hey, it's a possibility, folks. 
What do you think it happened? We're going to keep tracking like we always do because you never know. But I want y'all to go back to the point. I'm going to go back to a point real quick. Who's fleecing who? Who's zooming who? Pay attention, okay? Pay attention. All right. Commanders fans. Commanders fans. We're going to get into the commanders for a bit. We're going to get into the commanders for maybe about a couple minutes. And then we're going to take a short break with a video. But then we're going to pick back up with the commanders. So, listen, all I'm saying is, look, y'all, I said it, I, I just don't have enough time to cover everything, but I'm going to make this work. I'm going to make this work. So, first things first, before we cut to a, a, a little bit of a break, check out this video. You all may have already seen it. This was at the beginning of the combine last week. Given that it's March 2nd and the new league year is about two weeks away, can you be more definitive in terms of what you know as far as does this team need a veteran versus or, or is it, you know, are you going to settle for a potential, you know, rookie in terms of maybe the difference maker at, at the quarterback position? Well, I, I think this team needs a veteran. I really do. Mm -hmm. um, but the, it's not going to preclude us from looking at, at, at a rookie. It's not going to preclude us from saying that, you know, if we ended up with a veteran and also we draft a rookie, that this rookie's not going to get an opportunity. You've got to mm -hmm. be honest about that. I mm -hmm. mean, so as you look at that, what we decide is not going to preclude us from doing something else. You know, mm -hmm. this is all part of the process of putting your football team together because you still need to have you know key players and key positions but you also have to have quality backups or guys that you're going to prepare for in terms of the future so listen last week when we were all together what happened they went all out and they said seattle listen we want russell westbrook what was so interesting? Now I gotta give it to the G, the GM, and and and, and Coach Carroll and others on keeping the most straight of faces and saying we're not dealing Russell Westbrook, Lord Wilson. Too much going on. Too many Russells. Too many last names that start with a W. So. I said the Seahawks absolutely they that we want to talk about fleece. They got everybody on that one. Ain't nobody mm -mm. whole time they've been working with Denver. They've been working with others. Like I told you all last week, the combine is for business purposes. It's business being done. Yes, the incoming rookies are trying out and they all of that. Yeah, yeah. But they are there to do business. It's a business meeting, okay? I must say, the Seattle Seahawks, inclusive of Russell Wilson, did an amazing job keeping a straight face of no deal, no deal, no deal for anybody and everybody that was asking. Because as you all know, for weeks, a deal was being made with the Denver Broncos. Now, that's some good business right there. OK, that's some good business doing right there, because at the end of the day, let's be for real about something, y'all. Now, some coaches and we're going to get into this. Some going to tell you straight up like Ron Rivera is OK, and like he did and like what he's been saying, OK, and what they've been displaying behaviorally. But there's some that they're going to they're going to tell you they're going to stand right up there at their podium and tell you, no, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. And the whole time they know exactly what they're doing. They know exactly what they are doing. So I want to show a quick video and then we're going to keep the show going because we got a lot to talk about from commanders. If you all didn't hear the big announcement that was made this week on the Seawall Sports and Entertainment fifth anniversary, here it is. <laughs> Hi, 
everybody. My name is Candy Waller, and I'm the founder and CEO of Seaball Sports and Entertainment, a sports media outlet covering professional collegiate and youth sports in the Washington metropolitan area. As you may know, this is my fifth year anniversary, and I am so very excited to be celebrating with all of you with this very special announcement. Some of you know that I'm having a fifth anniversary celebration in which I said there's a, a charity that we'll all be donating to, and I was going to share that news today, March 6th, on the fifth anniversary. It is my honor to share with you all the announcement of the Seawall Foundation, a program established to enhance the life skills and athletic programs for high school and collegiate athletes. There's definitely more information to come. To learn more about the Seawall Foundation and to donate, you can go to www.seawallfoundation.org or you can send us an email at info at seawallfoundation.org. I look forward to working with the community and partner organizations on this amazing community initiative, and I'll be talking to you all again soon. So thank you all. As always, it's way more to come because we're going to keep everything rolling with Seawall Sports and Entertainment. And now we have this amazing community initiative in the Seawall Foundation that we're going to be doing and spearheading in the community. So we are excited and it's going to be a lot of fun. You're going to be seeing a lot of Seawall seawall everywhere you turn the seawall the black and gold seawall the purple seawall you'll see it everywhere so thank you all so much for your support and your prayers um we're just gonna keep it going and keep it positive so back to the conversation about the commanders you all know i don't do this often so because there's a lot to talk about and i realize i haven't had a commander show to dedicate um, solely to the commander. So I want to make sure that I'm reporting and giving the due diligence that's necessary um, from Seaball Sports and Entertainment to the fan base. So that's why we want to keep the, keep the conversation going for a bit longer. Now, back to Russell Wilson. I know I called him Westbrook. They all, it's all the same some days, but Russell Wilson. Kudos to the Seattle uh, brass for keeping that straight face. OK, um, Russell Wilson is now a Denver Bronco, also not related, but I want everybody to keep watching. We got to figure out who's going to buy the Denver Broncos. But anyway, um, here's the interesting thing. Right. And I want I definitely want to address this part. It seems as though Commanders fans feel like Russell Wilson said absolutely not to coming to Washington. Washington was not the only team that was seeking Wilson. Okay. Everybody's putting, putting, everybody's putting their chips in all week long, weeks long. These conversations are happening. Right. And so it's not, it's not bad at all. It, it, it's, it's really, truly not because truthfully going into the week, Seattle already knew, right? Denver already knew. Here's something that I'm probably certain of. Washington already knew as well. They just wanted it to be abundantly clear. We need a quarterback. Here's another thing that I want just the Commanders fans to know. It's not about, listen, Seattle, this is business. Seattle has been Wilson's home. They love that man and vice versa, but it was time to move on, right? They don't want to see him every year. So they said, don't trade him in the conference. Don't trade him in the conference. That's business. It's not, I mean, it's not about, Oh, no, I can't go to this team. Oh, absolutely not. 
Look, it's no point in talking about which team you want to go to when it's already been decided. Hey, listen, yeah, yep, yep, we all know. Yep, we're trading them, but we're not trading him in the conference. No, no, no discussion. We've already discussed that. We're not trading him in the conference. That's it, y'all. There's no, there's no, it's no, it's no underlying. Oh, he hated here. Oh, the organization is bad. He told a lot. They told a lot of organizations no. So listen, made the decision. Don't take it so personal. It wasn't the only team that said they got a no from Seattle. So that is what that is. They don't want to see that man. And I don't blame them. So there's that conversation, okay? Please put that thought, bias, rumor to bed. It was not he didn't want to play in Washington. 10, da, 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 da. does not want to play within the conference. They now X that out. Okay, that's done. Now, if you notice, all of this started being announced after when it was a sure thing that Aaron Rodgers' deal with the Green Bay Packers was set. Aaron Rodgers, for sure, his contract is set. They can go public now with Russell Wilson going to the Broncos. Now everybody else figure it out. The commanders now have Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz. Here's the thing. Again, Washington was not the only team trying to trade for Carson Wentz. Now, here's what I want to say. Is it? The ideal situation? No. In my opinion, the ideal situation is that Tom Brady comes out of retirement and saves the Washington Commanders. But that's not going to happen. A, a second ideal situation would be that um, go get Drew Brees. See if he'll come back. Mm, that ain't going to happen either. So Carson Wentz. My biggest challenge from a quarterback play perspective, it's an upgrade. It is an upgrade. It is an upgrade. Okay. Here's my concern. Carson Wentz has been consistently discussed as having locker room challenges. Now, because we know that Ron Rivera is huge on character, I think that, you know, in his military background, he thinks that Carson will do fine in his system. I'm sure that he will. But it's something to be said if that's a consistent message. Now, if we went and circulated some of the Colts players, it wasn't like they were all that happy that he was being traded because the Colts have dealt with their fair share of quarterback carousel themselves with five different starters in five years. So there's that. I also want to say there is something to be said about Ron Rivera's opinion that the team is only a quarterback away. Now, they're not tendering Kyle Allen. Pretty much knew Kyle Allen was going to be the odd person out at quarterback. We all know that they are, they have cut Landon Collins. Landon Collins, they asked Landon Collins to take a pay cut. They asked him, he said, okay. He asked him to take another pay cut. He said, I'm not going to do that. And that's fine. What we've seen now in the last couple of years is similar to Ryan Fitzpatrick. It was just a year. Then here we go again, just a year. This is a year. You feel like you got good solid pieces brandon sheriff where is brandon they've been trying to do a deal with brandon the deal has not since worked out we know that he's not on the list of franchise tag players so this year might say hey we think we can go with this person here's another challenge with carson carson is he all right but if you got locker room challenges and you have durability challenges, then of course, now you back where you started because you got 
Taylor Heineke. That's cool. You absolutely still need to draft a quarterback. And I even have to chuckle when I say drafting a quarterback because they signed a rookie quarterback last year. Where did Steven Montez go? But nonetheless, this is what has to happen. All right. But what is abundantly clear to me is that Ron is certain that the team is only a quarterback away. He thinks that Carson Wentz is could work. He, they believe that. I mean, he's absolutely better than Taylor Heineke. But durability and leadership challenges will be something that's said for. I want to go back to the point of them cutting Landon Collins. Now, this was a move that was expected anyway. The challenge with cutting Landon Collins is that he actually was your best performing linebacker. This tells me a couple of different things. Sure, take the first pay cut. All right, don't want to take the second one. Okay, you got to go. Try your chances in free agency and see how that works for you. But again, I'm going to repeat, they asked him to take two pay cuts. He was fine with the first one, was not fine with the second one. All right, cool. That means you need to fill a hole. Because even with Landon Collins being your best performing linebacker, that does not mean that that position group was good because it wasn't, right? So, again, that's me talking. Ron Rivera has a lot of faith in Cole Holcomb. He has a lot of faith and so much faith that he used the first round pick on last year Jamin Davis, right? We got to think about these things to understand that then their minds believe they are just a quarterback away. But then I ask the question of this, a quarterback away from what? Because that is very important. If you're talking a quarterback away from playoff contention, I can give you that. I can give you that. And here's why I can give you that. I can give you that because there was probably a solid three games that I can think of from last season that if the quarterback play had been better, sure, I think the team could have won the game. But there's still many issues. And so next week, we all know, starts free agency. So you're trying to clear the cap. You're trying to clear the cap space. But if I go back to the point that I'm making about, and that other people said, hey, you crushed the cap, then that means that Ron Rivera believes they are truly only a quarterback away. That's what that meant. Quarterback away, bring Taylor Heineke back, and we'll draft a quarterback. That's what that says to me. It's abundantly clear to me. That's why you bust the cap the way you did, because you really believe that's all you need. Someone that understands the game can at least get the, you know, can throw the ball down the field. That's what you think. And that's fine. But he's actually showing everybody that he believes the team is only a quarterback away. I don't believe that. And I've said that repeatedly. Understanding that Brandon Sheriff was was a high, high, want to be a high paid offensive lineman. That is, uh, that's tough right there. Losing Brandon Sheriff even still, but the the price tag is a bit high, right? So if that doesn't work out, that's going to be a lot. Seriously. So here's what I'm saying. Then maybe they'll make a splash at wide receiver because Terry absolutely needs someone else. Um, they're going to definitely need a veteran at linebacker. I'm not certain if the situation with John Bostic is what that's, what that's going to be like. But if this staff feels strongly enough that you were okay 
with your best linebacker. And let me go back to this. Your best performing linebacker didn't even want to play the position, but was doing it for the team and ended up being the best one. That's a hole there. That's a hole at linebacker because that was already an issue. You got an issue at linebacker. Um, I'm going to still say that your defensive line underperformed. So, hey, if that's how you choose your cap, I said, all right, this is what this is what he feels. And this is even more so, let's see if any splashes are made in free agency. But what does that really mean? Because I honestly don't think that this team is because who are you going to pay? But I honestly don't think this team is just a quarterback away. But the move for this year that they made is it at quarterback is an indicator that they do believe that. Just get a few more pieces. Okay. All right. It's more to be seen and more to come. Next week is going to be a big week. Free agency, all that's coming up is going to be a big, big week. Big week for a lot of teams, for all the teams, right? Because only one can be the champion. And every year, people are trying to improve. So, hey, the team has shown everybody that they believe that they're only a quarterback away. And that is why they felt comfortable spending the cap that they did. Now, unless they surprisingly cut some other players and release some more money for the cap, which is absolutely possible, I wouldn't put it past them. You know, I wouldn't at all. I would not put it past them that they release some more players for sure. Um, if there's an opportunity for them to get better at that position, um, but currently they have stood by they only think they're a quarterback away by making the move and getting Carson Wentz. So based on his cost, let me be clear, based on his cost for this year. Now, if it doesn't work out, no money, no harm, no foul. See y'all later. Bye Carson. But to many of the points in the chat, you that still indicates you have to draft well. You have to. And it's still very uncertain to me, well, who's going to be the leader at quarterback? Because there were obvious issues with Taylor. They said, Taylor ain't it. He ain't, it's not it. And obviously, other teams don't believe Carson Wentz is it either because of the cycle of teams he's been on in a very short period of time. More to come. But it certainly does seem like the quarterback conversation is will continue. Folks keep bringing up Matt Stafford. Here was the difference with Matt Stafford. Matt Stafford showed consistency with a team over time. Right? And even his numbers were consistent over time. But he's also a clear indicator of the difference it makes when you're in a better organization with effective offensive weapons for you to leverage. That's the difference with a Matt Stafford. We've seen Carson Wentz be on three different teams in the last three, four years. That's the issue. That's the issue with Carson. Um, but we shall see. We shall see. But I do think that um, what they just did indicates, you know, how they feel. Um, I see a question here um, about the trainers and um, medical staff. I don't I don't know. what they're, they're still uh, trying to interview people. So we'll see what happens again. My, my take on that last week was get the recommendations. They said they were highly recommended. OK, highly recommended. By who? Highly recommended by who? Um, and so I also want to acknowledge DJ's comment as well about the cap 
and all that. Oh, trust me, they working that cap. They working the numbers. They're absolutely working the numbers. That That's not... Now, again, yes, it is an indicator that they have a lot of faith in Carson for this year. And if it doesn't work out, he can go. But they're not going to be left with a little bit of money in the cap. They'll absolutely work through that. I, I, I believe so as well. Like I said, don't be surprised if some other players end up getting released and that allows for more money in the cap. So more to come, more to be seen. This is not the person... Um, while, yes, in my opinion, on the field, it might be better for certain. Um, it also indicates that this team absolutely still needs to draft a quarterback. And the veteran quarterback is one thing. A leader for your locker room is something else. And I do not think that the Washington Commanders have that. Not at all. So. We'll see. We'll see what happens in free agency next week. We'll absolutely see what happens. Um, I think there'll be some changes coming, coming around because they're definitely going to move somebody around. More to come, you all. More to come. I had to give you your, I had to give you your commander's update. I, I, I did. It was so much going on. I think that's all. That was all of the commanders update I had because that was the bigger, bigger thing. But, you know, Washington won the, the Wentz sweepstakes and they weren't the only team that was trying to trade for him. So, hey, it is what it is. Finding a good quarterback, a solid quarterback is not easy. So when you find one, you got to hold on tight to him. All right, you all, thank you. So very much as always for listening, for checking it out, for sharing the show, for loving the show. And as always, I will see you all again very, very, very soon. You're not on the field. Yeah. Or, or ice. You're on the couch. To DC. This is Coach from the Couch with your host, C. Wall, delivering coverage for all DC sports teams from the hometown perspective. Nats, Skins, Mystics, DC United, Washington Wizards, Caps, Bowie State. My name's C. Wall and I'm a PG girl. Down for my skins, I don't know if you heard. If you like watching sports, then I am your girl. Sit down on the couch if you're not on the field. Cold on the ice, pick any sport that you want. Know that I cover it tight. What would you like from baseball to football and more? The list can go on the whole night. Big shout out to my HBCU fam. Never forget who I am through the wins and the losses, the highs and the lows. We gotta stay strong, so I stay ten toes. Make the competition back, back. The way I kick it, make them mad.